I remember the time when I was a little girl. Dancing was different then. Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Rasa the Dancer is here. And if you have been dancing for less than 15 years, this video is definitely for you. I've been traveling the world and I've been dancing for more than 15 years. And what I'm noticing now, the new people that come into the dance scene, they don't really know a lot of the things that have happened before them. So I thought what a fun way to do a video and just let you know the things that happened when I started and what is happening now, a couple of pointers. And maybe if you've been dancing for a long time as well, in the comments, chip in, let me know what you think has changed or, or is different so that the people who just starting to dance would understand not only what's happening right now, but actually what has been happening for so many years. So let's get into these juicy history moments and subscribe to the channel. Okay, firstly, did you know that bachate existed before sensual bachata existed? <laughs> so they used to be before bachata even was in the scene in Europe, I'm talking only in Europe, there used to be salsa, more predominantly danced than bachata, right? It was salsa first, then bachata slowly came into the picture and it used to be in the clubs that they used to play salsa for like six, seven, eight, maybe songs. And then they might play one or maximum two bachatas. Then again, seven, eight, nine salsas because it used to be just a salsa night and just few touches of bachata. And then bachata got a little bit more popular. People liked bachata. So they started playing a little bit more bachata, but it was still predominantly salsa. And we used to dance bachata, uh, a mix of Dominican, a mix of Moderna. It's kind of like salsa 10 patterns with some basic bachata steps. And then for those who knew a little bit of Dominican bachata or had some teachers coming over from Dominican Republic, they started fusing it a little bit. And sensual bachata came way, way later, much later. So there used to be just mostly salsa with a touch of bachata and, and actually, we also had Kizomba then come in, and Kizomba was also then played one uh, many salsas, then one bachata, then one Kizomba. Many salsas, one bachata, one Kizomba. And then Kizomba got more popular than bachata. Then again, bachata got more popular than Kizomba. Then Kizomba more popular. And it kept on going on and off, and it's still this day when people say bachata is taking over. It makes me smile because now a lot of Kizomba people will be like, no, Kizomba is taking over. It keeps on changing with times. It keeps on changing with who is more popular in the scene, uh, what is more trendy, what is going around, who's a better teacher at that time. But it keeps on changing. There is no such thing as taking over. It's just something that is more popular at this particular time. So I thought this kind of information for those people who just starting their dance and thinking this is more popular, or this is more popular, is for you to understand that everything keeps on changing all the time. One thing that has always been more constant is salsa. Now it, it is the lowest I have ever seen in popularity compared to bachata and kizomba, but it's always been a constant. People always dance salsa first and it's something a little bit more comforting for everybody because it's less close and, and it's a little bit more fast and it's good for your health and stuff. So a lot of people from different ages dance salsa. Um, so it's always there, but other things keeps on changing. So there's a fun fact for you from the past. Did you know that dance shoes and dance wear in general, dance clothes, but especially dance shoes, wasn't an important thing in the dancer's life? I'm talking salsa and bachata. Ballroom, of course, it has been around for ages. Ballet, of course. But salsa and bachata, for years, you used to be recommended to wear dancing shoes that has a plastic sole or a leather sole, so it would be slippery. You have never been recommended in the past to buy ballroom shoes or something, unless you become super professional, like you go to like super advanced classes or you start assisting or something, then the dancing shoes come like in, in, in play. But in general, I remember when I started dancing, I didn't see anybody with dancing shoes. Women would wear heels or flats, but mostly heels, but they would wear like something that is comfortable for them that has like a leather sole because 
I think it just used to be different in terms of turn patterns as well. They weren't as crazy as they are now and, and so on and so forth. But then only later on, the dancing shoes became such an important thing. So I started, of course, wearing dance shoes and all of the rest. And now I'm going backwards. You barely will see me with the dancing shoes unless they're like my favorite. I have few favorite kinds that I really love. And I would wear them with a dress if I'm in a congress or something. But I'm actually wearing like simple day-to-day -day shoes, long boots that are comfortable with leather sole. Or I wear sneakers most of the time, some sparkly or fancy sneakers. But they have plastic soles, so they're perfect for spinning. So I'm going backwards. I'm going like, I'm wearing the shoes that I like, that I could dance in. And if you see some of like my favorite dancers, like... Um, from African Jet, you have uh, Debbie, and she's like a queen of spinning. She's wearing usually platform shoes. Like, if you look at Nahir from Bachata, she's wearing some crazy shoes, and they're not dancing shoes. I mean, they mix it up, but my point is, dancing shoes and dancewear became such a trend now. But it used to be you just like you would look at your closet, what is the most outrageous thing that you could wear, and you just put that on. <laughs> <laughs> something like okay I can, where can I show a little bit of leg which dress will suit and then sometimes you would cut the dress yourself my friend Cash she used to do all kinds of shout out to Cash uh, she used to do all kinds of cuts outs and t-shirts and we used to just cut out the t-shirts because we wouldn't be able to find what to wear for dancing. You know, for dancing, you want more breathable things. You want some sexy things. You want to show some skin, some belly button or shoulders. And in, in English shops or other shops, we didn't have a lot of options for dancing that would be what we want. So we used to cut things. Cash used to cut the t-shirts and sew it back together and everything. And we still do it till this day. So that's why we're so handsy as well. In the Congress, if something breaks, call us because we can fix it. And another and extremely big phenomenon that is different than when I started dancing, there was no social media. There was nothing. There was YouTube and like nobody really from dancers uploaded a lot of YouTube videos, just some. So it was just like a beginning of YouTube and there's no Instagram. So it's it was crazy. Like we would have to find material from this one couple and we just squeeze that material dry we used to invent things ourselves because there was nothing to steal from somebody else because you you don't see anything so if we would invent moves ourselves we would practice like crazy we would travel and attend all of possible classes that's the other thing now people are very picky like oh i'm gonna attend this class but not this class because i already been to this person before so i know all of the stuff or i can see them on youtube like people sometimes don't come to my classes in the congress they come to me and say i because i have you on youtube and because i'm joining to your membership and i do your online classes i'll go to other teachers that okay of course it's okay but you know what i mean um but back in the day if we go to a congress we would attend every single class there is like non-stop and because we didn't even there was no even time to record we didn't even have I don't think I had a phone to record I don't remember but you would have to put it in here and practice and everything so it was it was crazy we would attend every class we would try to squeeze everything out so our memory is different the way we process the information was different and the only way you can put yourself out there was attending the shows uh, doing the shows or doing competitions there was many more competitions that people attended because it was the only way to show yourself now you have Instagram you have YouTube you show yourself all the time people get famous um, not necessarily for the teaching skills or great dancing but for the outfits they wear or the personality that they have which is fair enough but it is different. The teachers were different. The mentality was different. The things that they would pass on, the knowledge is gathered through conversations that we had between the professionals. I don't remember when the last time I sat down and had a, a conversation between new people who are in the scene that would be based on knowledge and interest and I don't know. Things are different. This is, this is where Ross is going. So sad. So sad. 
This is where now you come in. Leave a comment. Let me know how do you feel about the dancing these days. And if you've been around for a long time, let me know what is the biggest change that you see in the scene right now. And go deep, you know, we are here, all friendly people. We have friendly discussions. Nobody's nasty to anybody. So feel free to express yourself. I can't wait to read your comments. You know I love to do that. And now I will leave you, but check out these other videos I made about the dancing scene. Check them out. Give me some love. Subscribe. Thumbs up. You know what to do. And now, goodbye. Mwah.